Louisiana Beer Reviews Special Edition Francis Connor Vice Beer Revisited Natoltub Premium Heffa Vice Beer. It is part of the Anheuser Busch InBev Beer Empire. Now in America, I'm from America. <laughs> we get the foil neck, but in Germany, in Deutschland, and in well, from what I could tell by looking on tap into your beer, every other country in the world they just get a naked label. Okay. Uh, so interesting to look at their website. They're talking about how the company was founded sort of like it was like it was monastery, you know, monks in Bavaria, and then over the years it got acquired by private interests that were not affiliated with the church, and then they had different owners. And then this deal with the monk drinking the beer here on the label, the famous was developed by an artist in 1935 and um, that became their their famous thing so this this outfit this entity has been in München since 1363 in the days of the Heiliges Romische Reich the Holy Roman Empire the first Reich eventually Spaten bought Francis Connor okay the big Spaten family owned company they had gone around they went around buying up other companies. Then in the early 2000s, or it might have been the mid 2000s, I believe it was 2003, InBev came along and told these people, you want to sell out to us? And they say, yeah, because it's been about the money for us for a long time. I'm not saying that the quality of the beer wasn't important, but that's what they were doing, acquiring. So then they got acquired. But still brewed according to the Ryan book of 15, 16. Um, they have an extensive website now. I mean, you better have a lot of hours to spend looking at this website. They got all sorts of recipes, okay? Um, there's um, different things on there about the, how they are very serious about acquiring the best ingredients for the beer. And then there's a whole thing about how they brew the beer. and how you should enjoy the beer. I mean, there's videos they have on there, just all kind of videos about here's how you smell it, here's how you taste it, here's how you pour it, here's how you look at it. Um, so it's really fascinating there. And then um, there's a whole history of it. And what I was shocked about is that they didn't start making wheat beer until 1964. So it's only 51 years. This is their most famous thing. But they, and that's their thing now, right? Wheat beer is France. It's kind of, they got the Spaten doing the, other beers, the lagers and the um, box, doppel box and all that, pilsners, but they didn't start the wheat beer until 1964 and then that was so popular that became their flagship thing, their claim to fame, and they started adding all kind of different wheat beers to their, they got this Francis Connor Royale that they developed and it just keeps growing and growing and, and the beer advocate saying it's outstanding Ray Beer's giving it 94 out of 100. I think it's 100 out of 100 for the style. Um, this is five, let's see, 5% 5 alcohol. Um, I'm putting it in the Blue Moon glass because it's similar to the Francis Connor glass, except that, um, you know, the Francis Connor one has a different logo. Very bubbly, orange, big foamy head. Now, people will tell me sometimes, you don't want a big head on a beer. It ruins the beer. No. <laughs> There's a whole video on their website about how you want this huge head that looks like ice cream or some kind of flute on the top of it. <laughs> this is like one of the standards, the world standard for a Heffa Weiss beer. Heffa with um, yeast. So a yeasty white beer. Oh, white beer, wheat beer. Sorry. Oh, beast, wheat, wheat beer. Wheat. Net I couldn't figure out what that means. Um, 
I looked, I did a translator and it said Nettletrub means Nettletrub. <laughs> and this is like a German word that won't translate. Maybe it means like the original one, the, the first wheat beer from this company. There's a huge array. It smells so much like banana and coriander and spiced bread. That's what they were talking about. And of course, it's coming from wheat, so it's so bready. And it's got barley in it. The Reinheitsgebot, the German purity law, allows for wheat. And now yeast, at first it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I don't really like wheat beers because I'm not looking for banana and coriander and all of those spectacular flavors. But I do enjoy them and I don't care to pair them with food normally because I find it interferes with the taste of the food. But I'm going to eat them with these, I don't know what people are saying, not this again. Yeah, the Ritz um, bacon flavored, artificially flavored crackers and it says it's certi certified kosher for dairy. <laughs> So you, bacon wouldn't be kosher, but bacon flavor is okay. That doesn't sound kosher to me, that whole concept, but I don't care. Just eat these one. I'm too hungry. Oh. First issue, 1962. Marvel told me that this would be the last issue from May 2015, first to last. I had a feeling that was going to happen because the, I knew the sales were not good. People don't read comic books anymore, mostly. Fantastic Four was canceled last month and hit been around since 1961 continuously. They went up to number 640 plus the special editions. The Incredible Hulk debuted in 1962. It ran six issues, but it wasn't popular and it was canceled. But the fans that did like it were clamoring to Marvel to bring it back because they say you didn't do it right. It has so much potential and Marvel agreed. So the next year, 64, they brought it back and it ran continuously until now. They didn't bother renumbering it back to the correct number because the, the, the Hulk actually never had the correct number after number six. And that's a long story that's not relevant to this. Um, the body on this beer is kind of heavy. Um, the drinkability is good. The finish is not too dry sort of wet. When I wrote my original review in 2011, I gave it a B. I said it was good. I said it was very guzzable. You do pick up the tap water. I mean, you're going to get that in these sweepers. I don't know why, but you, you just get it. Um, Abita had a wheat lager, which they stopped making. That was a strange one. At first, I didn't like it. Then I started coming around to it. I could realize, I realized good things about it. Okay, so, um, I can't get the head to be as super duper as they were showing on their website, but it's coming along pretty nice. And then you can see all the heifer flowing down in there of the yeast. Well, this is a dynamite beer. It was only $2, I think, in 29. No, it was $2.99 at Dorgmax. If they'd have still had it at Martin Wine Cellar had been $2.29. Dornax is always more expensive. But they carry a lot of stuff that Martin Wine Cellar doesn't have, so of course you gotta go where you gotta go. I would go higher now. I said B. I'm gonna say A now. It's an A beer. It's most excellent. If you've never tried this world classic, buy and try it. No, it's not a craft beer. It's a mass-produced beer. It's always been for 51 years a macro beer. It's a macro wheat beer and it's fabulous. It's wonderful. And a lot of people are going to say in A, 
just the most excellent. It's way higher than that. <clears throat> Maybe it is. You know, I don't love wheat beers, but um, <clears throat> it's a grand old item to review. So, les les bon temps roulé. Wonderful stuff. <clears throat> and I'm going to end this review. <sighs> it's very carbonate. carbonated. Carbonated. Um, so, you know, I didn't give a whole lot of descriptors in it, like adjectives. Um, I'm not just going to make that up. I'm just going to say that's what it tastes like. It's pretty basic, but it's a wonderful basicness. I don't think I said that right, but it's, you know, you get the drip. And y'all come on down to New Orleans!